to Ephesians chapter 1. I will be reading the fifth verse for emphasis. <coughs> Ephesians chapter number 1. Beginning with the fifth verse. And it reads from the ESV translation of the Bible. In love, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons and daughters through Jesus Christ according to the purpose of his will to the praise of his glorious grace with which he has blessed us in the beloved. The word of the Lord is blessed. For a few moments, I want to lift up the theme. Your value is not in man's rejection, but in God's selection. Your value is not in man's rejection, but in God's selection. The only way for us to achieve a true sense of significance in this life is to be in right relationship with Jesus Christ. A person who lacks relationship with Jesus Christ has no spiritual value, no standing before God. No purpose or meaning in this world. So it behooves us to walk in right relationship with God. If you don't want to walk in right relationship with God, you are like the chap spoken about in Psalm 1 verse 4 which the wind drives away. When we are children of the living God, we are joint heirs with Jesus the Christ. As we begin this dialogue, there needs to be knowledge of what the blessings are that we get from God. So we are aware of our position in Christ. If we are going to be a progressive church, and I believe we desire to be a progressive church, daily we must be striving to look more and more like Jesus the Christ. Let me throw this in parenthetically. It is not our duty to look more like the world. Amen. To look more like Jesus requires dedication, self sacrifice, and effort. As believers in Christ, growth in Him should be our daily goal. We simply must strive to be committed. And Elder Keel, if we're going to be committed, we must honestly be aware of our current position. We must honestly be aware of our current condition. Let me let you know this. I don't care what you make other folk think about you. God knows the heart. 
So we must be honest about ourselves if we are going to make a difference in this world. We must strive to give maximum effort to achieve Christ likeness and fulfilling the Great Commission. And when we talk about the Great Commission, Sister Shirley, we know that it's simply not about what we do at Hope Missionary Baptist Church. Reverend Slater, it's about what we do for the kingdom of the true and living God. So we must strive to be like Jesus. And we must strive to fulfill the Great Commission. And we understand that positive advancement is achieved by having concentration and focus on God. The Bible tells us that we have an inheritance waiting on us in heaven. But the prize that we are running for in this life is to daily look more and more like the master. Do I got 10 folks up in here, up in here that want to look like the master? I think that it's imperative for us to know who he is before we strive to run this race. Mm -hmm. Too many times we are trying to do the work of the church we, when we don't really know the head of the church. Amen, lights. Amen. Preach, Larry Moe, I'm doing the best that I can. We have to seek to know the master first. We have to spend some time with Jesus the Christ. If we are going to engage the process that leads us to our purpose, the Bible tells us to prepare our minds for action. And your mind is in direct relationship to your heart. We have to prepare ourselves to act with self-control. Because we must realize, no matter what it looks like, we have individually been strategically placed where we are for a time like this. And God's requirement, Sister Millie, is that we get the job done. I don't care what folks say about you. It is your obligation to get the job done. You may have struggles in your life, but it is your obligation to get the job done. The songwriter said, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness, but it's our job to get the job done. I'm going to tell you this. On the day of judgment, God is not going to ask you about somebody else's process. He's going to simply say, mostly, it was your job to get it done. And I want him to say, well done. You got it done. But we must be committed and obedient servants of the Most High God. And think about it. If we are obedient servants, there's going to be a change in us. And people will see the change 
can know that we did not do it in our own strength, but they will know that it is the Lord. And it may cause them to come running. What must I do to be saved? But before running this race, we need to ask God the question, what are your expectations of me? What is it that you want me to do? The problem is, many times, we have the wrong person in position when it's better to have no person in position. Preach, Pastor Mosley. Preach, Pastor, preach. And too many times, we got the right person in the wrong position because we have not sought God and asked him, what do you want me to do? It is our obligation, Deacon Smith, to grow in maturity, to grow in our faith, to grow in God. And our ultimate goal is simply to be holy. For the scripture says, you must be holy because I am holy. I understand that I need to be a citizen of the kingdom before I run for the kingdom. But see, many times we are worried about positions. But in the eyes of God, we all got the same position. <laughs> this simply requires us to know our place in the kingdom of God. And if you don't know, I'm going to tell you. Our position, are you, are you ready for this? It's simply servant. We are called to serve. Now we serve in different capacities because we've all been gifted differently, but we've all been called to serve. Know your place. By knowing our place shows that we have respect and admiration for our God. And we must be, I don't know football starts today. Yes. <laughs> well, it started, it actually started Thursday, but it gets, it gets going today. But in order to be successful, Sister Cindy, <laughs> in order to be successful, you got to know how to play your position. Yeah. In order to win the prize, that's the Super Bowl. You got to know how to play your position. If you, if you know something, I, I know y'all know Tom Brady. So somebody can come up to me after church and let me know anytime they've seen Tom Brady line up as a linebacker. <laughs> He's not an offensive lineman. He's not the center. He's not the punter, even though he may have punted once or twice. The key is, in order for the team that he has been on to be successful, he had to play his position. And guess what? I can use Tom Brady. He played. He, he, he does the quarterback position in excellence. Amen. You may not like the Patriots. You may not like Tampa Bay, but you got to get the brother some credit. I don't like either one of them. But you got to give credit. But credit is due. And so we're going to follow the gospel of Brady on this morning. We are going to learn to play our position. We're going to learn how to run some routes 
And see, when we run some routes, we got to run in our own way. But in order for the church to be successful, we have to play our positions. And I don't know why God is taking me down this street. Go down this street. Go down this street. I go one. <laughs> But we understand our position is the same, but our gifting is unique. You have to embrace the fact that God has selected you in the midst of your imperfections, your past. God has selected you even in the midst of your afflictions. God has selected you and he is using you for his glory. I want you to get it in your spirit that the position is the same. But the gifting is unique. It is unique because when we are in the midst of discomfort, God is our comforter. And when somebody else is in discomfort, God uses us as their comforter. The position is the same. But the gifting is unique. But God is saying to us on today to play your position. Play it in excellence. Play it like your life depends on it. So how do we begin to understand our kingdom positioning? Number one, God blessed us and he blesses us simply because he is good. Number two, God chose us because he wanted to. Number three, God predestined us before there was in us. Isn't it good to know that God loves us? Isn't it good to know that God has selected us? Isn't it good to know that even in the midst of our calamity, God, he never gave up on us. He knew that we would fall short. But God never gave up. He knew that we would fall in some potholes. Sometimes, but he never gave up on us. He knew that we would fall victim to our own selves. But God never gave up on us. He simply wants you to know your worth on today. You are a child of the king wherever you go. We can give God praise on today because he saved us. But we must know our worth. We are children of the most high God. We must know our worth. Our sins have been cast in the sea of forgetfulness. We must know our work. There is an inheritance on the other side. We must know our 
our work. There are no more tears on the other side. We must know our work. There are no more hearses on the other side. We must know our work. There are no more graveyards, no more cemeteries. But over there, every day, is going to be Sunday. And the Sabbath will have no end. Hope Missionary Baptist Church, those on virtual, I need you to know your worth. You are valued by our God. No matter what folks say, no matter what folks do, God values you. God said on today, you are blessed. God says you are chosen. God says you are worthy. God says you are predestined. So I want you to declare on today, I thank God I've been selected. If you've been knocked down, you've been selected. If you've been lied on, you've been selected. If you've been lied to, you've been selected. If you got tears in your eyes, you've been selected. If you've been broken, you've been selected. If you've been hurt, you've been selected. Trouble don't last always. We fail. God selected you. 
and he wants you to play your position. Remember that the position is the same. The gifting is unique. And God chose us because he wanted to. So folk, you know won't choose you. But God has chosen him. And you can take great confidence in God's selection because he predestined us before there wasn't us. I want you to turn to your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, know your worth. Know your worth. So say it like you mean it. Say, know your worth. Turn to your other neighbor. Say, know your worth. Because see your value. I'm going to say it one more time. And I'm thinking this belt is coming up. Your value is not in man's selection or rejection, but in God's selection. God blessed us. God chose us. God predestined us. Your value is in God's selection. God bless you. The doors of the church are open.